Good morning, everyone. I'm Teresa Marentet, CEO of the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit. Thank you for joining us today. In light of the provincial announcement, we are deviating from our usual format for daily updates. As a public health unit, we are committed to providing accurate and evidence-based information to our community. Since the beginning of COVID-19, the pandemic, we have committed to uh, transparent and open communication, bringing the community updates on our local situation in Windsor and Essex County. Today, I am joined by the Chair of our Board of Health, Mayor of Tecumseh, and Warden of Essex, Gary McNamara. Our Vice Chair, Deputy Mayor of Lakeshore, Tracy Bailey, Board Member and City Representative, Councillor Reno Borderlin, and Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health. Yesterday, we heard the news that Windsor-Essex will not be opening to Stage 2. As a member of this community, I understand how disappointing it is. You have likely heard many reasons why we are the only community remaining in Stage 1. I want to be clear that the decision to move to Stage 2 is not the we choose decision to make. The province of Ontario makes these decisions based on local data. I can assure you that our health unit has been doing everything in our control and with our role since the very beginning of this pandemic. The role of public health in the pandemic is to provide information and public health guidance that supports community leaders to take action for their communities. This includes providing surveillance data to inform plans and develop information based on science and evidence. A key role of public health in any infectious disease outbreak is case and contact management. To answer the question of what the health unit has been doing, I will provide some highlights of our work related to COVID-19. Since March, the health unit has been fully committed to the work outlined by the Ministry of Health as part of the COVID-19 pandemic response. We reorganized our entire operation to support emergency response, extending hours, and the days of our operation and redeploying every available staff to COVID. Early in March, our health unit organized and supported individual community health care provider sites to perform COVID-19 assessments and testing before either of the hospital-led assessments and testing centers were opened or approved. We revamped our entire website to ensure information was easily accessible and readily available and began daily news releases and news conferences. We have not shied away or hidden information. We have most certainly stepped out in front of it. The health unit has followed up on more than 1,300 cases in Windsor-Essex County within the provincial target of 24 hours and conducted daily calls and monitoring. Our health unit has also followed up with approximately 11,000 contacts identified through investigation to provide instruction and direction to limit the spread of COVID-19. Our health unit supported every long-term care home and every retirement home in our community to mitigate and manage COVID-19 in their facilities. We developed training documents for long-term care and retirement homes before anything was available through the province and completed testing not only on all long-term care facilities, but also on retirement homes, which went over and beyond the provincial requirement. We had regular and daily conversations with all long-term care homes in Outbreak to support them in their decision-making and strategies. Early on, the health unit worked with the City of Windsor and the CHC to develop a strategy of health assessment, testing, and isolation for individuals experiencing homelessness. The We Too developed a guidance document for shelters weeks before the provincial guidance was released, launched training, supported shelters with PPE and hand, sanitizer, hand sanitizers, and eventually helped to organize and complete testing for all emergency shelters in Windsor, including those not funded or supported by the city. As well, we have proactively worked with other congregate settings to support on-site testing and hundreds of individuals at risk for COVID-19 due to exposure. In an effort to ensure the community had the answers and information they needed, our health unit has developed many, guideline doc many guidance documents, tip sheets, memos, posters, and has translated this information into multiple languages. As well, our health unit has answered an average of 300 calls per day with over 27,000 calls over the past three months from the public. This is on top of the emails and meetings we have hosted to share information, 
provide guidance and support as requested by community partners and leaders. Public health inspectors have conducted thousands of site inspections and supported agencies with on-site walkthroughs of their facilities to assist in site management and pandemic planning. As well, enforcement officers have worked six days a week monitoring compliance with provincial orders and reporting to the police and bylaw as needed. We have supplied and delivered thousands of PPE to primary care providers and community agencies to support them to deliver essential services while waiting on supplies during their shortages. To get a sense of the prevalence of COVID-19 in our community and to increase accessibility of COVID-19 testing, the WeChu organized random drive-through testing over 10 days across our region, testing just, over, just under 5,000 residents for COVID-19. We launched the most compre comprehensive education strategy and information in preparation of the temporary foreign worker program coming to our communities. We have proactively tested on farms since March and have regularly communicated with farms, owners, operators, workers, and collaborated with partners including OMAFRA, OVGA, Ministry of Labor, and the Consulate. It is hard to hear the comments about our health unit. Even harder for our staff who have worked so hard these past months for the health and well-being of our entire community. We have remained steadfast and focused on our role and remain committed to our community during this pandemic. I will now turn it over to our board chair, Mr. Gary McNamara. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Teresa, and uh, to my fellow board members that are here as well, uh, and to uh, Dr. Ahmed. Good morning, everyone, and uh, I am uh, pleased to be here to, uh, to address. Uh, the health unit has sh certainly shouldered the weight uh, of this crisis and, uh, and also the, uh, the blame. So let us be clear. This is a global pandemic, one that have not experienced in any of our lifetime. And we're all learning together and we should all be in it together. It requires response at all levels of leadership and all levels of government. When we have disasters in our communities, we prepare. We prepare on the advice of experts and we take action. Actions based on that advice. Rather than leadership, we are witnessing finger pointing and deflection to our health unit that has done nothing but work tirelessly over the past several months to prepare us and guide us through this pandemic. And they did, and they have. We have not had hospitals overrun. We have not had the use of arenas as morgues. And we continue to have access to supplies, information, and essential services throughout all of this. It is the preventive messaging and the work ethic of the public health. It is the messaging the public health has supported our community and guided us through all of this. It is public health that is connected with thousands of people in our community who have been tested and or exposed to COVID-19 and walked them through this day and day out. Instead of pointing fingers, we should be thanking them for the work and asking them what they need. We have to work together to control this. Following public guidance and protocols is the only way uh, to prevent the spread and move forward. To say Health Unit has not done their part is simply not true. And I say it again, it's simply not true, period. The Mayor of Windsor has stated that because the Health Unit will not mandate testing, they have failed this community. This is not true. Testing will not solve this issue. Testing every person in the farm will not get us to stage two. The province has stated very clearly that they are using our rates of positives to determine if we move forward. Let us be clear, again, testing will identify more cases, not less. Our rates will continue to increase. Individuals in long-term care were not required to participate in testing. 
they were encouraged. The authority of the local medical officer of health under the Health Protection and Promotion Act cannot be used in a way to supersede other individual protection laws, including the right to privacy and human rights legislation. We cannot solve one crisis by creating another. There have been statements made that farm workers are touching our food and testing will ensure it is safe. Well, this is not true. I mean, there is currently no evidence, absolutely no evidence, that COVID-19 is transmi transmitted through food or any person symptomatic to any workplace should it be excluded from work regardless if they are tested or not. Following public health guidance and protocols is the only way to prevent the spread and move forward. We all want to get to stage two, but it's not on the health unit. Let's make that very clear. It is on our collective health and municipal leadership to overcome. The staff at the health unit are doing their jobs. They are part of our community. They're residents of our community and have dedicated their lives to serving our community. They deserve more, and most importantly, they need our support. Thank you. Dr. Ahmed? Good morning, everyone. Since the beginning of the pandemic, public health goals were to save lives, limit the spread of COVID-19 in the community, protect our healthcare system. With a strong public health system in Canada and in Ontario, we have achieved all of these goals significantly. The overarching goal of all of these were to minimize the economic and societal impacts of COVID-19. And this is what we are dealing with right now. And this is why we are talking about all these workplace outbreaks. To date, we have seen more than 1,300 cases in our community. And out of these cases, roughly a little over 400 cases are in the agri-farm industry. We now have at least 10 farms that have more than two cases in their facility. Testing at agri-farm industry is one small component to address the COVID-19 outbreak, and we have all the community partners supporting the initiative to do the testing at the farms. From a true disease containment perspective, more than 90, 80 to 90% of the work is currently being managed by public health and only by public health. To continue to move forward, we need collaboration and support. When I say we mean, I mean the community needs this. We need our local law enforcement agencies, including police and bylaw officers to support provincial public health orders, including physical distancing, gathering limits, and isolation orders. We need workplaces and municipalities to support isolation facilities for workers so that if testing is completed, there is a plan to accommodate the isolation needs of these workers. We need accurate information to be provided to us from our partners who are working in the field with vulnerable population so we can follow up with these people who are tested and positive. We have, we have successfully reached out to 11,000 contacts and more than uh, uh, thousands of cases uh, that we have seen in our community. We continue to get incomplete set of information from, uh, from various sources that makes it much more difficult for our uh, health units to do our job. We need municipal leaders to support workplaces affected by COVID-19 in our community through reinforcement of the required public health measures in order to move our community forward as quickly as possible. We need our community leaders to remember that the 240 individuals employed at the health unit have been working tirelessly day and night to support all aspects of public health mandate, live in this community and care for this community as much as everyone else. We will continue to do the work of public health we will continue to support the community. We will continue to be using evidence based to, uh, to guide our decision making. We will continue to be undeterred from our mandate. We will ignore the noise of those looking for someone to blame and will continue to work towards reopening our community in a safe way. <clears throat> we will be here to support the community should this virus experience a resurgence in the fall or in the winter months and beyond. We will continue to provide all the other important programs that the community has come to depend, including mosquito surveillance, food safety, oral health, immunization, breastfeeding support, home visiting to new moms and babies, and other inspection and enforcement activities. Thank you.
take questions from the media. We'll start with CBC. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, my question is for Dr. Ahmed. Um, you've gone over a lot here, and obviously there has been some public backlash. Can you explain a little bit more why um, officials have felt the need to address this issue today? Um, so I think it, what we are seeing right now in the community, it's unfair for our staff who has been working for the last three months tirelessly. And the, the amount of work that we have done, I think it's worth sharing. Public health, we work silently, we work quietly in the background to keep our community safe and protected. And uh, for some reason, that message is not going through. And uh, for some reasons, there are other messaging that's being pushed forward to, to undermine the credibility and the authority of public health and the work that's been happening. So it is, it is unfair for our staff to be feeling that uh, they, their, their, their work is not being appreciated and acknowledged. So sharing all these details about the work that has been done and it continues to be ongoing, it is important for the community to know and understand the magnitude of the work that's been happening here. While all the other health sectors, health system partners were working at a reduced capacity, public health has been working at double the capacity for the last three, four months. And it's just truly unfair for all of us who live and work in the same community to, uh, to feel that uh, their work is undervalued or underappreciated. Dr. Ahmed, do you feel the city of Windsor should have been more supportive to public health? Well, I think what our focus has always been is to protect our community and uh, our partners to understand their role. And as uh, uh, our CEO, Theresa Merent, had mentioned, that there are a number of factors that come into play and we need support from all, our, all of our partners. We have done so many work when proactively and uh, came up with our guidance, our recommendations, but we are, we need the other partners to take it up from there and implement it and enforce it. So I think it is important that uh, people need to look at what our role is specifically and uh, what uh, their role is and to work uh, from there. Thank you. Any questions from Blackburn? Uh, yes, also, Ahmed, um, and I think uh, the testing of the microphone movement is is not what's going to solve this. What is the next step? What can we do this week now that is going to take us to step two? What partners do you need? What do you think needs to happen? So I think, uh, as we mentioned, that uh, and uh, our board chair, uh, Gary McNamara, mentioned, when we are doing the testing, we will bound to have uh, cases. So that's, that's, that's not, a, shouldn't be coming as a surprise. And unfortunately, when we, when we will pick up those cases because of the living conditions, we will see a surge in those cases. That's why we are seeing one day we have six or seven cases, and the very next day we have 20 or 30 cases. That is giving you the magnitude of the problem that uh, the accommodation, the living arrangement, that has been the critical issue in spread of disease in this particular population. And we've been saying this for a long time. And uh, we, need, we need good, strong support to house these, house these people. And uh, that, that has been the issue. In order for us to move forward, I think we all need to do a better job in containing the disease, which we are. But we also need to think about what are the other ways that we can support uh, the ongoing work. Critical issues will still continue to be the accommodation and enforcement of all these activities that we are having and uh, limiting the spread of the disease in the community. So the city of Windsor has offered up the um, their isolation center. Are you looking for others to come forward? Do you need more space? Is that is that what's needed? More isolation rooms or whatever that might be? Um, I think people are, we've been dealing with the issue for a long time and people are looking for, I guess, action items that can make this, make, to come to kind of some kind of resolution. Absolutely, and I think we've been very clear that we need more of that. Um, I, I believe uh, what we what I last heard is the 25 rooms that are being opened up. But uh, when we are talking about these shared accommodation, uh, a single bunkhouse can have 15 to 20 people. So these 25 rooms is just uh, is can, can solve a little problem. But when we are going through with these cases, and we have seen if you have a case of 30 case in a day, and if all of these individuals require their own separate room, 
25 rooms or 30 rooms hotel, that's easily filled. So we need to we need to think about uh, some bigger uh, shelter type situation where where we can we can find a large space that's uh, that's good enough to keep all these people isolated in a safe manner where we can have all these facilities directly at on site which includes health assessment which includes food and any other need basic needs that they may have which would enforce uh, which would help with the ensuring that these individuals are following by their self isolation requirement and uh, and then uh, complete the uh, the isolation without uh, affecting anyone else Any questions from AM800? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if you said or if I missed it. Uh, so there's 32 additional cases today. How many of those are agri-farm workers? I believe 30 of them uh, are agri-farm workers and two are uh, would be uh, attributed to community. Okay, thank you so much. And a uh, question for uh, Mayor McNamara. Um, there were comments uh, yesterday from Windsor Mayor Drew Dilkins just about, um, I guess, your lack of speaking up uh, on behalf of the county uh, as warden with everything that's been going on. Uh, do you have a, a response to that at all? Well, my response first, it's a, it's a lot easier to point fingers and deflect blame to, uh, to other folks. Uh, <clears throat> what a lot of folks don't understand is the amount of conversations that I, I, I've had with uh, provincial and, and federal counterparts, working uh, directly with the, uh, the farm community to find some common ground in terms of the isolation piece. First of all, I'm not one to point fingers. I never had um, because that is counterproductive in, in trying to find solutions. Uh, that's uh, certainly easy to, uh, to oh, that's, uh, sorry. <laughs> That's easy to do in terms of pointing fingers and, and so forth. That's not my style. Uh, my style is work uh, with uh, uh, groups and to try to find resolve into the issue at hand. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's again, I think, uh, counterproductive uh, to put blame on anybody, whether it's a health unit. Number one, people have to understand this is a world pandemic. Nobody here uh, wanted to have uh, uh, this pandemic, uh, Teresina. Uh, and, and so forth. It's, it, it's to be able to work. People were concerned early on about uh, how are we going to protect our food supply. Well, you know what? It was through uh, migrant workers. It's been like that for years. And it's not just conducive to Windsor-Essex. This is throughout the country. Uh, you know, where you get your meat supply, where you get your poultry supply, your vegetables, your fruits, uh, and the processing uh, plants themselves are through migrant workers. And uh, to sit back and, and point fingers uh, is not finding solutions at all. We need to work with the farming community. We have to create an awareness uh, and find that common ground and, and solutions to the problem, not deflect or uh, on, uh, on passing the blame to other folks. To say that uh, county representatives uh, have not been, uh, been doing uh, anything, that is absolutely false. And, uh, the mayor of the city of Windsor can give me a call anytime. That that has not happened. Okay. Uh, sorry, hi, Mayor McNamara. It's Christy Lee, not Teresina. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to uh, You're so check. Like um, Teresina. <laughs> that's okay. Um, this might be for Dr. Ahmed. Then uh, yesterday, when the province was talking about how Windsor Essex would be going into or staying in stage one, not going to stage two. Um, they said that there will be a partnership with the federal government to start inspections of living quarters at these farms. So uh, has any of this been happening? Have there already been inspections? And what information do you have on these, I guess, new inspections that will be happening in partnership with the federal government? So uh, again, just a point of clarification, our health inspector has been inspecting uh, these facilities before they were approved for accommodation uh, based on the guidelines and the regulations that is already exist. Uh, we have been talking with the federal government for the last two weeks. Uh, um, we have made uh, some progress in terms of the specific roles from Service Canada Public Health Agency in, uh, in, 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 in these accommodation settings because this program is run by federal government and they have all these specific requirements, the expectation from the employers, the living arrangements, all those things come under federal government uh, uh, authority. 
So that's why these conversations were happening. And, and one of the things that I said that there's a lot of work that's been happening on the background. Maybe it's not coming out the way it should, but our team has already been engaged. There are plans in place to go and do a joint visit with federal government as well as our health inspectors. And there have been a number of other visits that's been happening, again, with the, uh, with the joint inspection from Ministry of Labor, from our health inspectors, and other agencies. All this work is constantly happening since right the, from the beginning. And uh, it will continue to happen. So the details of the specific visits, obviously, we, it's, it's not public because the intention is we go on these farms, do the joint inspections, uh, accommodation settings to, to, to find what's going on and how we can improve the, the living arrangements, how we can improve the program overall. That's the intent with the collaboration with the federal government and also with our inspectors. And I'm sure that uh, the provincial government will also support in some of these initiatives. Okay, thank you. Any questions from Radio Canada? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, so I'd like to know why uh, don't you give the name of the agricultural co companies affected by outbreaks, as you did with uh, long-term care facilities or retirement homes? So would like to know the name of the companies which are infected. So uh, a short answer is the the long-term care home and retirement home facilities, we, the, it is the law, it's mandated by the law to identify and list those facilities because there are certain actions that are associated with that. There is no law and requirement under the Privacy Act to name these facilities unless there is a risk to the public that we can, we can, we can confirm and establish. That is why we are identifying the number of establishments that we have uh, in specific jurisdictions or specific municipalities to offer more information. Having no access to public to these farms or to, uh, to any other places, it's just uh, uh, looking for more information without adding any real public health benefit to it. If there is any risk, I would be the first one to disclose the name of any of the facility in the community without uh, without any hesitation. But it, there has to be a public health risk to the community in say, in in, say, uh, in in sharing that information. Right now, there is no uh, under privacy law. We cannot do that unless we have a risk that's established uh, to the community. Uh, okay, um, I have a. Thank you. I have another question. Is uh, that do you have the total number of agricultural workers affected by coronavirus since the beginning of the pandemic, and also the total number of migrant workers affected? So uh, roughly, because this number is changing constantly, I can say we have uh, a little over 420 cases to date since the beginning of the pandemic uh, in all these uh, farm workers. It's very difficult for us to make that distinction whether these farm workers are temporary foreign workers versus local resident. Um, and uh, we'd like to do that someday, but I can say that it would be easily be a 80-20 or 90-10 split uh, with majority being the temporary foreign workers um, and the rest uh, local residents. Okay. Uh, I have a question for Mr. McNamara, please. <laughs> uh, if, if you can uh, answer in French, euh, ma question, c'est si faire davantage de tests va faire monter les chiffres, qu'est-ce qu'il faudrait faire pour euh, combattre les éclosions, combattre les, les épidémies dans les, les, dans, dans les serres, en fait? Mais, euh, je pense que ça a été euh, expliqué par le euh, euh, Dr Ahmed. Uh, sur la, la di difficulté certainement de uh, contenir ce, uh, la, la pandémie uh, sur les, uh, uh, les fermes, parce que certainement les, le logement, c'est très proche. Uh, et puis aussi, uh, il faut certainement avoir, uh, il faut que travailler ensemble pour trouver uh, 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 certainement uh, une, une manière de d'être capable de protéger certainement les, tous les travailleurs sur les fermes aussi, euh, aussi euh, euh, contenir euh, les, les, euh, les travailleurs euh, sur la ferme. 
euh, on, on travaille, euh, euh, certainement je suis en communication avec, euh, avec euh, les fermes puis, euh, pour être capable de, euh, de ménager euh, euh, certainement les, les, euh, les, les euh, travailleurs que, qui, qui restent sur la ferme. La difficulté aussi, euh, c'est euh, les travailleurs qui... Et, et, euh, et la, la transportation dans la, dans la ville de, euh, de Limington ou bien dans d'autres euh, centres euh, dans le comté. Aussi, euh, ça, c'est un, un peu plus difficile, certainement, à contenir. Mais si on peut euh, certainement trouver une, une manière euh, d'être capable de euh, garder tous les, les, euh, les travailleurs sur la ferme, euh, ça, ça a été disponible par euh, certainement le... Euh, le docteur Ahmed, euh, ça, c'est une possibilité, certainement, d'être capable de contenir, euh, euh, le, certainement, la, la, la pandémie. Mais euh, on a besoin des, des ressources, certainement, du gouvernement fédéral, puis aussi euh, le gouvernement provincial pour être capable de, de ménager, certainement, euh, cette euh, explosion, certainement, sur les fermes. Merci. Quand vous parlez de difficultés de tra transport, vous parlez de quoi exactement? Bien, ce n'est pas tout le monde qui reste sur la ferme. Il, il reste dans des maisons distribuées, certainement dans d'autres dans, dans villes. Euh, certains, ça, c'est la transportation, ça, c'est autobus ou bien certainement d'automobile, que la mobilité des, des travailleurs, euh, ça, ça, ça cause un peu d'un problème, mais aussi... Euh, d'être capable de contenir euh, les, les, les travailleurs qui sont positifs, certainement, si on est capable de, euh, de ménager, euh, ménager certainement euh, sur la ferme, ça c'est quelque chose qu'on, on, certainement, on parle avec les fermiers euh, dans la région, puis aussi l'association la, qui représente les, euh, toutes les fermes. Merci infiniment. Any questions from Windsor -Ite? Um, Dr. Ahmed, are the mandatory mask guidelines still being released today? Uh, yes, it will be in our media release today. Uh, that will be released at 1 o'clock, uh, and all the details with the, everything will be in the media release. Okay, thanks. And in your uh, speech, you mentioned uh, that there were 10 farms that have two or more cases. Is that currently there are 10 farms, or since the beginning of the pandemic, there have been 10 farms? There has been more farms with active cases, but uh, all of those, like a, a good number of them have been uh, off the list not right now. And uh, there are new uh, farms that uh, are being tested uh, at different times. And uh, that number will be updated on our website as well to give you the, the most up-to-date and recent information on the farm. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the Windsor Star? Yes, Dr. Ahmed, about the mandatory masks, Uh, I've received a lot of questions from people asking how the health unit is able to to put this order forward and, and make this request of the public. Uh, can you talk about how it is in the health unit's purview to do this? Well, uh, let's just be clear that what we are asking is to have a policy at the commercial establishments only where people will go and there are uh, physical distancing may be a challenge at different times. There are a number of people who are already wearing the mask and uh, in, 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 in when everyone is wearing the mask, I think it's, it just gives everyone a sense of, uh, uh, um, I guess, um, make, it, make it more Uh, easy for everyone to wear the mask. So that's that's what the intention is. And uh, the idea is that people will be using it in, in good faith and do their part in terms of being as a responsible community member. When uh, everyone else is wearing the mask, they're also wearing the mask. And uh, for people who, for any medical reason or any other reason, if they cannot wear the mask, they will be exempted from it. There won't be any requirements or anything to have any proof of medical uh, uh, reason for not wearing the mask. So I think it is in the best interest of the public to, to wear the mask, especially in, in these type of commercial establishments where, uh, where physical distancing could be a challenge. And that's why we wanted to make a clear recommendation slash uh, uh, making it mandatory as a, in the form of policies uh, in these establishments to, uh, to have people wear the mask. So to be clear, you're making it mandatory that businesses have a policy around face masks? That's correct, yes. 
Uh, and you've been having a lot of conversations with the business community, I'm sure, about, about implementing these policies. Uh, what kind of feedback have you been getting? Uh, I've been getting a lot of good positive feedback because from the from many of the businesses. Uh, I've been approached by the uh, by uh, national associations as well as uh, I've spoken to some of the local businesses as well. Um, they are supportive of that initiative. Obviously, they are looking for more clarity in terms of uh, it, the the. Um, the fines or anything associated with that and uh, and I wanted to make it clear to them too that it's not a means to penalize uh, any businesses for not in uh, for not enforcing it we don't want them to be in a position where they are confronting people or getting into a situation where uh, it's uh, it's uh, it, it gets very confrontational so it's not a tool to penalize them it's more of an educational tool that we want these policies to be in place to uh, to protect uh, uh, everyone and give an opportunity, a clear recommendation to everyone who is visiting these establishments that this is what the expectation is. And if for any reason, any anyone with medical, religious, or any other reason, if they cannot wear the mask, they will be exempted from it. And uh, uh, but I hope that the majority will follow, and uh, it would be in the best interest of everyone. Thank you. Any questions from CTV? Yeah, actually, uh, Dr. Ahmed, um, many business uh, owners thought that your announcement last Friday will be a uh, mix uh, was, was going to be the, uh, the catalyst to, you know, moving us into phase two. So do you still believe that, or do our hopes to move into phase two solely hinge on what happens in the county? Well, I think uh, when uh, when making those recommendations and uh, and having those conversations with the province, obviously we wanna we wanna paint a complete picture of what are the things that are currently happening, where some of those risks that uh, we as a community are experiencing, and what are some of the risk mitigation measures that we have been putting in place to to mitigate those risks. So I think it's it, we have to look at it a complete picture. Uh, with the farms, obviously we know that there has been some some concerns. We again before even it hit the media, we uh, we we talked. We issued a Section 22 order late May to to make sure that the farm owners and operators are very clear from a public health disease containment perspective that what they need to do and what they need to enforce. We strengthened that uh, order uh, um, uh, June 12th, I believe, and uh, we made more strict requirements identifying uh, some of the more strict uh, uh, criteria. So all of these things it helps to paint a picture. So when we are sharing the, our epidemiological summary, we're not only talking about the absolute cases, we're also talking about uh, the, um, the cases where these cases are and, um, and, and how it will impact the rest of the community. What are some of the risks in the community where these cases are? Are these close contacts? Are we are talking about community spread? And then also looking at the healthcare system capacity. Uh, what the healthcare system capacity looks like, what's the societal and economic impacts that we may anticipate for, from these type of initiatives. So yes, that is something that we, we think that it would help the community, not only in the short term, but in the long term. Because COVID is going to stay in our community for a long time, like until we get to the point where we have an active vaccine, uh, effective vaccine uh, that uh, everyone is have access to. Until we get to that stage, we'll have to learn to, to keep ourselves safe, our community safe, and still continue on with our societal and economic uh, activities. So in my opinion, um, those are all the, the reasons that we have and we need to continue to look towards uh, stronger public health measures to keep our community safe. So Gary said uh, that we're all in this together, and I understand that. You know, you said it a couple weeks ago, we're, we're together as a region. Um, but I know a lot of businesses have bled out I know there are a lot of businesses that are bleeding out and on the threshold of, of closing, um, you know, and, and firing people, and a lot, a lot of, you know, like you said, uh, the, the impact on society is, is getting great right now. So, is there any way that you can talk to the government, talk to Doug Ford, and, and plead for Windsor to open and sort of, you know, break us away from the rest of the region? I guess is the question. Because I hear that a lot from a lot of business owners. Is that even a possibility? Um, I, again, that's uh, when the province made that decision to, to enforce emergency and have all these measures in place. Their recommendations, their direction is obviously, is, uh, it supersedes everything that we've been saying. So the direction obviously comes from them. 
how they make that determination, which which region need to be open, which region need to be closed, and even this, the boundaries of where, where Windsor Essex County starts and where it ends. Uh, so having said that, I think uh, the, uh, it, it would be, it would be challenging for me to say that, yeah, no, we, we want this. I think we have to, again, have a collective voice together to see if this is what we as a community accepts and this is what we as a community wants rather than me being the, the only voice to say that this is what is needed. So I think we, we definitely need some collective um, uh, voice together and talk about it as a region that if this is what we like to do, this is what we want to do. My recommendations was very clear and highlighting what are the risks if we continue to stage one, uh, stay in stage one, what are the risks if we, uh, what are the additional risks that we will face when we move from stage one to stage two. I, I, I want to I add, add to, uh, uh, to Dr. Emmett's comments as well. You know, when you talk about, um, say, the, you know, separating the city from the county or some of them and, and so forth. But here's the reality. People in Leamington can go to, uh, to, uh, uh, to Chatham-Kent and, uh, and so forth. So um, I, unless you put an electric fence, I guess, I don't know how you're going to stop people from going one place to the next. That's, that's the harsh reality. I think the key component here uh, uh, is uh, how do we put a bubble on, on obviously the, the farms themselves? Because yeah, if you look at the numbers, you've seen one, one, two, uh, and, and it's not just the city. It's, it's LaSalle, it's Tecumseh, it's Lakeshore, it's Essex, and even though the communities that are involved, uh, the numbers are, are relatively low. And, um, but at, at the end of the day, the decision comes from the medical officer of health in Ontario, and the directive flows here. But, the, but here we are, we're, we're at the bottom end of the peninsula in the province of Ontario, and, and to basically say, um, you know, somebody can go 10 kilometers to Wheatley and uh, get a haircut and, uh, uh, and do the same. I think that's the reality when you think of it. It doesn't make much sense, does it? Uh, in, in that regard. So we've got to continue to have that dialogue with, with the provincial government and we've got to find that common ground with the farming community to build that, that, that confidence to them that uh, the measures in place will, will you know, not put them out of business as well because this is, not, this is not a tool shop where you can shut down for two weeks or three weeks and say, okay, just start up the machines in three weeks' time and away you go. This is a, a, a product that's time sensitive that has to be picked at the, you know, today and tomorrow and the day after. And right now, it's the peak picking season. So you can see uh, the difficulties that we have. We're between a rock and a hard place. These folks are, are guaranteeing our food supply uh, to everybody. So those who are, you know, impatient, and I get that. I feel for it. I mean, like anybody else and everybody behind me here. I got a grandson that took me three months to give him a hug. Three years old, and he's asking why his grandfather can't even, you know, give him a hug. Uh, I've got a daughter-in-law who's uh, six months pregnant. I couldn't even congratulate her to give her a hug to say thank you. So everybody here feels the pressure and the pain of this pandemic. And that's why I said we're in this together. We all have the same issues. You know, my businesses in Tecumseh are suffering. In Lakeshore, as the deputy mayor behind me, uh, Reno, the councillor here, who was in a restaurant business, understands fully, you know, those, those, those issues. And to just slam uh, the health unit because it's their fault. Or it's, listen, I mean, you've got to take a step back, reflect a little bit, remove the... Uh, the stress and the strain and, the, and co try to get some common sense to say that, yeah, we've got to find that common ground to reopen and we've got to convince uh, the Ford government that we're no greater danger than Sarnia or uh, Norfolk or Haldeman or any of those places that have migrant workers. I mean, they're responsible people and so forth, but I think this pandemic, though, has opened up issues on how we bring people into the country, the legal and then, and then, the, and then obviously the uh, undocumented. That needs to be uh, dealt with in the mid midterm and that. But, but at the end of the day, realistically, open up one and the other. I mean, uh, do you think the people in the town of Essex are not going to come to Windsor to have a haircut? Yeah. 
So, so I agree, stage two, extremely disappointed that it didn't happen. And it's not because of Dr. Emmett that we didn't open up or Teresa or these people behind or in front of me. This is an order that comes from the provincial government. So we've got to convince them that we do have, uh, you know, we're tr doing our best to control uh, that particular issue. So Drew, yeah, so Drew um, um, was singing how, you know, everybody, like, you know, yourself, the mayors of the county, you know, we have a, a stronger voice, I guess, on uh, protesting uh, and whatnot with harm. So do you feel that, you know, you need to join that chorus? Does that court need to sing loudly for the court government, or yeah. are you more like, let's get it done behind the scenes and make it happen? Well, and we are, and we're having that conversation. Bob, I'm telling you, uh, yesterday I spent an hour and a half with uh, uh, one of the growers, one of the biggest ones there. Uh, I've, I've been uh, in uh, you know, constant contact with uh, Dr. Justine Taylor from the, the Growers Association. Um, I've had uh, uh, conversations with uh, Ernie Hardiman, OMAFRA. Uh, I've had uh, conversations with uh, other ministries, uh, Minister of Municipal Affairs. All of them were talking about, you know, what the efforts are being doing here. And you've heard the Premier, and, and uh, as of yesterday, even uh, uh, Minister Elliott, really praising the health unit for what they're doing. And I, I can tell you, I, I see the strain and the stress on, on these folks. It, it, and uh, nobody takes it very lightly. But to go out and, and point fingers and blame, that's easy. That's the easy stuff. It's get in the trenches, get in and have those conversations with people. That can make a difference. And I'm still pushing to say stage two, you know, for, uh, for next week or, uh, you know, what you can do this week. But we have to give some confidence to uh, the migrant workers, the farms, and so forth. And I, I do believe there are some some, uh, um, and I don't want to speak for Dr. Ahmed, I, I don't want to put him on, a, on the spot, but I think if we can contain um, kind of a bubble in those, those farms, and many of them keep their workers on the farm. They got ATM machines. They bring in the groceries there. There's a few little pockets where people don't live on the farm, and that creates a bit of a, an issue when they're integrated within the community and so forth. We have to find some resolve there. But if we can give confidence that we're, 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 we're there to work with the, uh, with the farms and the market workers and not shut them down, I think you're going to see the testing part. They'll be, they'll be telling their folks to get tested. But the testing is not the end-all, be-all. It'll tell you what you want to know, obviously, of the infection rate, but be careful what you wish for. Because if you think for a minute those numbers are not going to be high, you're fooling yourself. So th this is why they're working hard behind the scenes to uh, to work with the, uh, with the migrant workers. Like I said, the la yesterday an hour and a half with uh, one of the biggest growers, and uh, I don't tell you he wants he wants Windsor to open. He wants everybody else to to open. You know, because, and and some of those farm uh, owners are getting death threat threats. That's getting pretty serious. And so we, we need to, um, you know, I don't know if it's because of the heat and the weather, but uh, obviously we've got to work together to find resolve in dealing with this, this, uh, this issue. And, and I do believe we should be opening up uh, to stage two. So I'll assume that you're happy that the government's getting involved now. And, and you know, that could perhaps fast track to what we're all, we're all looking for is, you know, entry into phase two. No doubt. I mean, uh, they're going to be sending folks. I think uh, I'm looking at Teresa, I think, tomorrow. Uh, Service Canada folks are coming down. Uh, Department of Labor people are coming down and so forth. Uh, we've had uh, 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 public health nurses from uh, uh, Chatham Kent and I believe Lambton County uh, are down here to help, uh, help our troops here. And remember, they haven't had a day off since the end of February. And, and uh, you know, I'm concerned for not only their physical health of these folks, but their mental health as well. They're exhausted, and but they're 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 continuing to fight, and uh, and and now it seems they're fighting against a current, a very strong current, and and I get the frustration. I'm frustrated like like anybody else. Everybody here is frustrated. But at the end of the day, the pandemic is not over. The pandemic is with us, and it will continue to spread. 
And you're seeing it in the United States. You're seeing now almost half the states now it's out of control again, including, I believe, the, the state of Michigan are having some issues. You know, and you see folks jamming the beaches at Colchester, Wasaga Beach and, and, and others. So as, as a, a, a health unit, not only here, but the other 30 plus, in the, in, in, you don't think they worry about, uh, about the resurgence of, of, of this? Yeah. But I understand the economy as well. We've got to find that balance and we've got to help our, our small business people work together. And, and uh, you know, we're going to continue to have that conversation with uh, Dr. Williams and, and, uh, and the uh, provincial government. And, and they're under pressure as well. Big pressure as well. So we, we need to work together. That's the big thing. Let's, let's uh, instead of creating more problems, more issues and more blame and pointing fingers, let's start working together and uh, collectively and, uh, you know, try to find some common ground. Thank you, Gary. We're going to end it there. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you back on YouTube uh, tomorrow. Thank you, everyone.